and welcome back at Adobe Live. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for this amazing day. It's been already so busy with video editing, with Illustrator, Paul Trani, such an amazing crowd and I'm super, super excited to be here. I wanted to say, first of all, hi, my name is Clady and I am streaming from uh, Manchester, UK. Let me know in the chat where are you streaming from and uh, you can see I'm by myself today. We're gonna spend two hours having fun in Lightroom and in Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you how to transform your photos that you take from your mobile into scroll-stopping social media assets. We're gonna create some, um, some Instagram little scrolls and we're gonna create some animation. We're gonna learn how to edit photos so they look nice and professionals, even if they're not taken in the best conditions. But first of all, let me say hi to the chat. I cannot see already a lot going on. And um, I can see Val there, you're nice to see you. Buddha Val, Val, we're together. If you guys don't know and never participated to a stream with me and Val, rest assured that there are going to be polls so you're going to be voting and we definitely i look forward to your input during this stream and of course i can see wade in the chat thank you so much for joining us also keep your eyes peeled because wade or val are going to be sharing clickable links and if you're watching from YouTube, make sure to tune in on behance.net slash live because that's where I can read your comment. I can see the chat very far away on YouTube, but I won't be able to read your questions. As I say it all the time here at Adobe Live, it's a fun and safe space to learn together. So take advantage of this lifetime that we have and, and on the chat on Behance to ask any question you may have on Lightroom, Photoshop, design, freelancing, business, all that good stuff. I'm here and I hope to help. And I want to say hi to Flip. Nice to see you, Laura. Nice to see you, Maria Elena. Oh, Maria Elena, should we? Let's do a little bit of a reveal already. Maria Elena is a friend of mine from Italy and we're gonna help her to fix her social media assets. Is a, I wanted to work with a real case study. I think it's always too easy when uh, instructors or streamers have the perfect photo at the perfect time. I'm gonna use my own photo, Mari's photos, and we're gonna hopefully help her to create some assets for her social media. But we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. I wanna say hi to uh, Sven, Christelle, Bruce, Uriel, Valderi, if I didn't mention it yet. Ciao Fabio, another Italian in the chat. Christelle, Carol, nice to see you. Annika, as I say all the time, um, Uriel is saying, Claudia sent your message on Discord, every uh, problem submitting for rework, rework it. So Uriel, for now, rework it is suspended for a little bit. We're gonna have a little holiday break. Uh, that was the end of season one. Uh, hopefully we're gonna be back, but you know, we're gonna keep you posted. We're always here having fun with the amazing Adobe Live family. Fantastic. So um, let me know in the chat. I love to see all these beautiful comments. As I say all the time, if you enjoy <laughs> time with us, Uriel, two hours with Clary. Finally, you guys asked for it. <laughs> so let me know if you are enjoying and if you're happy to be here with me, just give a thumb up, thumbs up on the little behinds. Or as I say all the time, especially because today is all about Lightroom and Photoshop. We're in a blue words because the icons of the apps are blue. Share a blue heart in the chat to share some love. I always love to see your love there. Fantastic. So Bruce, nice to see you. Um, Val saying, yes, we're going to be here. Paco also, nice to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, Bruce wants to know what kind of graphic do I have? So that's the Photoshop t-shirt of Max 2020, I believe. And probably if I turn around, you can see that he's got the Photoshop little logo. I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can, but he's an Adobe t-shirt, oops, this side. <laughs> um, and it's a, I got like a brush panel. So I'm on, I'm on theme, all Photoshop. 
fantastic let me see these blue hearts share the love i'm happy to be here with you guys but it's time to get started and for those of you who don't know me i'm gonna do a little bit of an intro um let's see if i can actually open the little introduction that i usually have here uh for my days if not we're just gonna jump on my website which is iamcloudy.com where you can find uh, um right away so many um information about me so hopefully we're gonna have the little um in design if not it's fine it, um, we're gonna talk about um what i do in a second as well so let me jump on my screen here and i'll just start with my website real quick and then we're gonna jump into lightroom so here i am in just a second boom and uh, for whatever reason if you have any issue viewing on hearing please let me know i'm always super happy to um help out and to do as much and to reply to as much as question as possible and in fact i'm just gonna bring the chat forward so i can see your comments even better fantastic right so um as i said my name is Clady. i'm an italian designer based in manchester uk where i have a lot of fun creating designs for amazing companies but i also um help and i'm super and happy to join this adobe live stream in my little studio if you head on my instagram you'll see that um there is a little bit of behind the scene of this of my studio here in manchester but most importantly here on my website you can find many courses on illustrator indesign uh in many different places so they are located here at adobe live many streams uh, you can find the replay here and also more about illustrator photoshop indesign from uh, adobe edx linkedin design cats and of course creative live so there is a ton of free um of free material going on if you go under resources i'm gonna also uh, be sharing the images so if you want to replay this stream you're going to be able to head there and see the images that we're going to be working with and what do I do besides uh, having fun with the illustrator and sharing my passion for the illustrator uh, for the il illustrator and all the other amazing apps? I run a design business here in Manchester, which is called Primasol.com. If you want to learn more, just go ahead there and uh, enough about me. It's time to get started and have some fun with Lightroom. So um, to get started today, I wanted to very, very quickly explore a Lightroom um, on our desktop to start with, just because I think that that's a fantastic opportunity. And also something that I really wanted to mention about Lightroom is that I stopped defining it. And I think that that's, you know, kind of the way forward. Uh, Lightroom is much more than an app. Lightroom is a photo, the standard, the professional standard photographic service available um, throughout different media. We're going to play with the phone. So we're going to go through my phone. Hopefully nobody calls me. <laughs> Um, but we're going to go through um, the mobile version of the app and we're going to go through the um, desktop version, which you can already see open here. And as I said, uh, this amazing Lightroom app is the perfect place where you can create, organize, edit, store and share your photos and then um, of course throughout your different social media so the beauty of working with Lightroom um, is that you can apply edits we're gonna have a look at all the different slider and the different occasions in which um, that you may want to use but most importantly is that you can use that on the go I use that with all my images uh, either if I use it for my social media but even if there are family memories and my mom all the time is like you're so amazing. This photo is so fantastic. And I'm just like, no, it's just Lightroom. <laughs> so that happens very often. And that's super, super cool uh, for um, for uh, for any photo. And I got distracted by the chat. Gladys, I can see Asus from here is in the chat. Hi, Asus. Everybody was asking about Rework It. Where are you? <laughs> Usually you're here next to me, but um, nice to see you here. Claudia's too modest to mention her new nomination. Let's see if she mentions it. So um, I can mention it. I probably do not have the, um, the link ready. I might can get it ready once once we jump into the mobile, see if I can multitask. But rather than a nomination, I've been shortlisted for the Illustrator 
um, the World Illustrator Award with the uh, AIO, which is the uh, Association of uh, Illustrators. So that's super, super exciting. Uh, I'll try to dig out uh, the link. That's for my book, Plan Therapy. So we can talk about that maybe. I have a break in the middle. But Jesus, thank you so much for mentioning that. He's super excited. Um, I'm so happy about the award. And uh, yeah, so Val, like, I can see you sharing the rework it. We're, we're not doing rework it, uh, at least for now. So thank you so much for sharing it. But and if you want to submit, we're still going to keep the files, uh, but it's not scheduled uh, for next week at the moment. Thank you so much, Valdeir. Fantastic. OK, so let's talk a little bit more about Lightroom, this amazing app, uh, this amazing service. Again, as I said, um, the beauty is that it allows you to easily edit photos, but most importantly, to access the edits from anywhere on the go. I'm going to start to introduce the little um, the, the workspace from the desktop. I just think it's a little bit easier just to get comfortable. And then we're going to jump on some edits on the mobile and we can move back and forward because that's how easy it is to work with this amazing app. Fantastic. And then maybe Val, um, Oh, Jesus got the link. Fantastic. Thank you. That really saved me sometimes. And thank you, Bernadette, Bruce, Val, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm super excited. It's always, you know, um, everybody tells me, you know, Claudia, you're doing great. And I always think I never feel like I'm starting. I, I'm so passionate about um, all these amazing creative workflow uh, that I feel that, you know, I still got so much, so much more to do. But right, so let's look at this amazing photo editing service that is Lightroom. We're also going to talk about Photoshop. And if you know me, we're going to jump into Illustrator as well real quick. You know that I cannot stay away from this beautiful workflow that is Creative Cloud. In fact, Lightroom is part of your Creative Cloud subscriptions. It comes, it comes together with all the amazing other apps. And before we get started, I want to point you out to a very resource, resourceful uh, website here, uh, which is the alpex.adobe.com slash Right, Lightroom CC tutorials. In this Lightroom tutorials page, you'll find many, many, many tutorials uh, that will help you to um, learn from the very basics. Today, we're gonna again, we're gonna talk step by step. So don't worry if you never used Lightroom before. And by the way, let me know in the chat how many of you are just starting with Lightroom and maybe this is just one of the first time that you're using it. Uh, I will be very excited to see um, how many people are starting it. So just feel free to leave uh, a comment in the chat or raise your hand again. Um, let me know. I'll be really excited to, to see. And as I said here from this uh, wonderful page, you'll be able to get um, so many different courses to uh, get started, uh, take a little bit more of an edit on the photos. And then we have the beginner photo editing course, which I want to mention um, as soon as I see is in the chat. If you do head here on the page, you can basically just simply click on each one of these videos and it's going to break down all the techniques that I'm going to run through today. And those are um, articles, but also videos. I'm just going to open one. So you can see, and they're actually written and produced by Asus, which is here with us. So um, again, there is a ton of information um, and we can see that we are some first time user, which is totally fine. We're going to start from the basics. And in fact, let's jump back into Lightroom. So as you can see, besides using resources like Alpex or the uh, main Adobe website to learn more about this amazing professional photo editing available on your desktop and on your mobile, we can also find more information here inside the Lightroom desktop version. If you click under discover, you'll be able to see uh, many different people that are actually using um, Lightroom to edit their photos and you can start to also follow people and um, get featured, which is amazing. So, you know, it's really exciting to submit your edits. If we work along and you feel confident about some of the edits that we're going to be making, well, you can actually share them with the word to inspire, but also to get featured. Why not? It's always very exciting to be featured in an Adobe app. 
You can also search all the different themes here using this tag. And we're going to learn also how to tag our own photo, which is uh, very exciting. And another place where we can learn more is, of course, the Learn tab here. And uh, from here, you can go ahead and follow step by step tutorials by so many amazing um, uh, professional like Matt, Matt Kloskowski. I hope I pronounced your last name uh, correctly, Matt, which is a friend that I met during my traveling in the States. An amazing professional um, uh, photographer and also instructor for Lightroom and I believe also Photoshop. So feel free to have a look at those amazing tutorials. They are very well segmented and from the title you can see exactly um, you know what's the topic and you can start from there. So uh, this is pretty much the basics to get started. Another very important thing is that I can hear at the very top is the panel that allow us to uh, display all the different uh, folders and photos that we added. As you can see, I have a few different albums here. In order to create an album, all you have to do is to click on the plus icon and then click on create album. Now, uh, always the question that I get asked when working on Lightroom is what is the difference between an album and a folder? So folder contains albums. So for example, if you have holidays photos, if you have holidays albums and then work albums, you can then separate them into folders um, by topic or, you know, whatever kind of other um, photo you would like to use. Valder is saying, I've been using the classic version for a long time, started using the Lightroom Cloud version after I bought the iPad, so also started using to make it quick edits. Bruce is saying started with Lightroom Mobile first because you could use the camera row images then progressed from there. Fantastic. Flip is also saying that it's the first time. Beautiful. That's absolutely fine. We're going to, um, you know, this session, this together, we're going to learn. I think is great for beginners because you're really going to get into details. If you're a pro, have ever used it before, I think we're going to go a little bit more in depth on the reason why you might would like or not to use certain sliders or certain filters here or adjustments. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity to get inspired for your next project. And Val, we're probably going to make some um, different polls so people can choose different variations. The viewers are amazing community here at Adobe Live. Fantastic. So feel free to ask me any question. As I said, while I keep working, I will be looking at the chat on behance.net slash live. And um, let's get started by looking at some photos. So if I actually move into my album called to edit, as you can see, I have uh, many different photos that we're going to be um, editing. And uh, again, I'm going to start with uh, any photo here and perhaps let's just move from this photo over here in order to see a photo for example if you do have just one photo you can see the icon here just one photo selected and you want to go back into the grid view so you are exactly looking at the same screen as i was inside the workspace all you have to do is to press the letter g on your keyboard and by doing so you'll be transported into uh, the grid view where you can see all the images present inside your album in a grid and we're going to learn how to move from lightroom um, desktop into photoshop the reason why i decided to start into the desktop version is because I think it's a little bit bigger. Um, I can show you that we're going to jump into my phone. Let's see. Let's have a little bit bit of preview. Let's see that everything is working right. Um, so as you can see, it's a little bit of a smaller um, interface. And that's why I decided to start from the desktop. So I think we're going to get a little bit familiar, especially we have a lot of beginners. We're going to get uh, familiar with the different sliders and then we can see how to find them inside the mobile and move back and forward from there and then to Photoshop. Time is already going too fast. Right, so let's select the first photo to start with and then all you have to do is either double click on it or select the right uh, on the right the edit panels. Once you click on the edit, first of all, let's see that the panel on the left side with all the albums disappears in order to bring it back at any times. If you wish to browse your album, all you have to do to look at your photos is to go back and click on the top icon over there. 
and you can also hide it by clicking on the same icon again. Then if we wish to collapse all the images that are below, all the little thumbnails, and you want to collapse them down, all you have to do is to click on this little icon, which I'm going to zoom in into, is right here at the bottom right of your screen, and you're going to be able just to focus on the photo. Now, other little things that you might want to um, have a look at before we start editing are the organization system. So if you are a photographer, uh, this amazing app will allow you super quickly um, to select photos, making uh, photo shoots, edits and photo selection and photo organization super fast and super easy. In fact, if we look at the very center here of the image, we can see, uh, first of all, that we have a star rating system. So you can rate your own photo and then um, you'll be able to search them. And also we have the amazing Adobe Senseis, which is Adobe machine learning technology that is always there looking and exploring and analyzing and will allow you to search any image based on uh, the content and of course their tags and of course based on this rating system as well. So you'll be able to classify and also to retrieve your photo much faster. And also you can flag your image uh, as an image that you have picked or as an image that is reject. So let's see, for example, you're looking at a photo shoot with a client. Uh, you'll be able right away to go through the images with your client. And by the way, if we go back to the grid view by pressing G, you can see that those uh, flag system are also available on the little preview. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see even better. So, you know, if you're with a client and you're looking at the entire grid of images, you can just simply go ahead and flag them or rate them already from the grid. But let's find the same photo that I was using. Um, here it is. And let's start editing. So the edits panel is located on the right side of the workspace and you can access it by clicking on the first icon. And as you can see, just real quick, the other icons that follow below um, are crop and rotate. And then we have some local adjustment with the healing brush the brush tool, the linear gradient, and the radial gradients. And then, is an, as a, any other toolbar, uh, we have the three dots, which will allow you to explore more options, like copying settings, paste them, or reset them, and of course, edit the image in Photoshop. Fantastic, but let's dive in into the edit slider. Um, I'm going to use this photo as a general example, and then we're going to move through different images. And maybe um, I'm going to share the, the little, let's do this. Before I get started, I'm going to um, let Val maybe do a little poll. What do you think, pa Val? Is too, it's too, too soon for a poll? I think it's a great time um, regarding next photo. So in next photos, we can choose between the south of Italy. So by the way, those are all my images, you know, no pros right from my phone. Uh, we can choose between my home, uh, south of Italy or um, Bay areas or a photo with me. So Val, if you want to do this little poll, we can start already. Uh, I can show you we have some photo. Usually we, if you see the, the seaside, that's the, the south of Italy. Um, then if you also, we have some Bay Area with the seaside and we have some of my graffiti, but we're not, we're not going into the graffiti yet. Um, and we have some food and cocktail as well, but we're going to leave it at the end. At the moment, the poll would be south of Italy, Bay Area, um, maybe Spain or photo with me for options. Um, Val is gonna be working on the poll and we're gonna start to talk about editing. By the way, feel free to ask any questions. Again, as I work, I always keep my eye on the chat and here we are. Fantastic, so let's have a look at this edit uh, panel. I'm gonna zoom in so uh, we can have a little bit of uh, a look in depth to all the different sliders. I think it's very important to um, understand. Oops, let me zoom out before uh, I mess here. I moved into a video, here it is, uh, the photo. So it's very important to um, understand which, you know, which function each slider has. Of course, you can always uh, hover on top of the um, label and they'll, that will usually give you um, a little description of the slider and what the slider does and uh, a little animation 
usually works. Uh, at the moment, we're not having the preview, uh, but that's usually one of the quickest way to to learn what a tool is about but don't worry we're going to talk about it together so the very first thing that we want to talk about is uh, uh what these adobe colors stand for uh, so this is the so-called profile uh the adobe color is the um I would say standard Adobe profile that will adjust the setting of a photo. This is very important if you're working with a raw image. Um, working with a raw image simply means that it's an image that comes directly from your camera with no edits. It contains all the data and information at the raw um, status. So there is no, no editing has been done and you can just simply bring it inside um, Lightroom and then you can use any of this profile to give a little bit of a starter um, of the way that you treat all this information. I will use Adobe Color as a standard. Um, so here it is. Um, make sure to select it. You have many other different that you can, you know, just simply over on and you can see that they are applied. I just like to start with the uh, standard Adobe Color. And then we can move into the first group of edits. Uh, as I say, of adjustments. Um, as I said, I always like to proceed from the top to the bottom, but bear in mind that any edits and any adjustment that we're going to be making in Lightroom is not destructive. That means that we can go back hide it, fix it, change it at any time. You're never going to destroy your photo. Your photo is always going to be there. The pixels are going to be safe um, and we can start making some changes as we go. So as we can see, there are already some information that have been changed by the profile. If you want to reset it, you can always go back to the three dots and uh, click on show original to see the original photo or uh, reset edits as well. Another way in which you can reset all the edits is to uh, hold the Option key on the Mac, that will be the Alt key on Windows, and then uh, click on the uh, label in order to reset uh, all the effect, just like so. Um, but let's start by the exposure. So the exposure sliders, and I'm gonna show you right away, controls the overall um, exposure to the light, so the overall brightness of an image. I usually try to leave, uh, leave, leave this um, such a global adjustment to the very end because I think that it's nice first to go and finalize the details unless it's extremely necessary. Like I think this photo is a little bit overexposed. It means that it's a little bit too bright. What I will do, I'll drag the slider to the left in order to um, make it a little bit darker and vice versa. If you're working with a photo that it looks a little bit darker, so is underexposed, you will move the slider to the right in order to make the overall image brighter. And uh, we move on to uh, our second slider, which will be the contrast. Uh, and again, I'm just going to give a little bit of a exaggerated slide to the right and to the left so we can see these uh, different options. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you in details again what they do. So as you can see uh, by this you know, exaggerated adjustment that I'm making, uh, the contrast slider will work on um, the brighter pixels by making them brighter and on the darker pixels and darker areas by making them um, darker. That will enhance the contrast and therefore will give will make your image pop. So if you have kind of like of a flat image and you're looking to quickly add some depth, you can do that very fast by using the contrast slider. Again, towards the right, uh, you're going to make, you're going to enhance the contrast. So again, the brighter areas, the brighter pixels will be brighter and the darkest area. So the darker pixels will be darker and you can see that right away. And of course, the opposite happens if we go into the left, into the opposite direction. So um, I always try to be very subtle with my contrast uh, because it's, it gives quite a dramatic effect. Now, before we move forward into the next um, sliders, first of all, let me know in the chat if you have a favorite. Uh, I have a few favorite sliders that for me are uh, more into the colors and the effects panel. So we're going to get to those in just a second. But let me know if you use uh, Lightroom before, which one are your favorite sli slider? Also, I can see my mom in the chat. Ciao, Julie. Nice to see you. Yes, she's saying um, 
uh, the wonderful sea of Leuca. That's that's where I'm from. I'm from the south of Italy, uh, the very very tip of the hill, and um, I that's where I lived until I was pretty much 16. And before moving and starting my crazy life in PR, as you probably know, um, you know I love to share this story because I'm. I think there are so many people out there that you know dream to be a designer or they want to be photographers and designers. I didn't start as a designer. I worked in PR. I started to work at the UN in New York. I was you know working in the marketing communication, but my only visual were graffitis and graphic design, as I say all the time, saved my life. We're gonna have a look at a photo of the of the graffiti in a bit. I know everybody gets excited with it, but that was my choice, you know, working at the UN and the graffiti at nights wasn't really a good match. So my option was either to get, uh, as I say all the time, fired or arrested, and I didn't like any of those. So luckily I went for art direction and design and I managed to put colors and marketing strategy together but let's make it work here uh with the photos and uh uh, by the way, Val, you're going to have to let me know the results of the poll because uh, uh, I'm not going to be able to see it here. Um, oh, actually, maybe I can on this other screen. And let me see if I can make this magic happen um, from my other screen. I will be able to see the results. Yes, I can. Um, let's have a look at what the poll is going on. So it looks like we have... <laughs> South of Italy or photo of Clarity. Nobody wants to see the Bay Area or Spain, at least for now. Uh, that's really funny. At the moment, South of Italy is winning. So I'm going to leave it, uh, the poll running. Val, feel free to share it uh, even further if you want to. In the meantime, Ash for Fool, nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And by the way, let me know where you're watching from. I know we got Valdair from Brazil. And Valdeir, you never you never mention where you are from in Brazil. I'm always super excited. I know Maria is in Milan. Um, Val is somewhere in California, I think. But let me know in the chat. Those are the only ones that I remember. We're definitely missing Steve uh, in the chat. I don't see him at least yet. Um, Bruce is asking a question. Fantastic. So. Uh, Bruce is asking, could you adjust certain areas in photos? For example, only the bright area in this picture? Yes, we're going to get to that. There are two ways in which you can tackle this. Um, uh, and I'm replying to Bruce's question here. So you can either choose to work with uh, local adjustment, which we're going to get into a second, or um, the specific question that you ask regard the bright areas. And we're going to jump into that just right now. In fact, uh, if we looked at the next slider after the contrast, so as we did, we did um, take a little bit of brightness, brightness off because the image was overexposed. And then we gave it a little bit of a punch uh, with the contrast. And then we move into the highlights. So the highlights will work on making, on controlling the brightness, brightness of the brighter areas. So it only looks at the brighter area, which is exactly what you mentioned, Bruce, and is going to control its brightness. That means that if we move towards the right, uh, we're going to see the bright pixels getting brighter. And if we move towards the left, we're going to see the bright pixels getting darker and uh, the beauty of that is that you're going to start to see and you can see that happening in the sky um, the more we go ahead and make the brightest areas a little bit less bright we reveal some details that usually are hidden and lost in these overexposure in areas that are really really bright or almost white so as you can see the beauty the beauty of the sky and it's um cyan color is blue color was getting uh, uh lost uh into the white into the brightness so if we go ahead and we tone down the highlights by dragging the slider to the left so we're going to reduce the brighter brightness of the brighter areas or the brighter pixels uh, we are going to start to reveal the beautiful color and we're going to look at this area which is a little bit more brighter to try to make it a little bit um, better in just a second with some local adjustment but let me move down again into the light with the shadows control the shadows is of course the opposite as the light with the highlight of the highlights the highlights was controlling the um, 
um, lighter areas, the shadows are controlling the darker areas. Um, so in this case, of course, if we move towards the left and we're going to make the darkest area darker, we lose the details because, again, we are losing pixels within the darkest area areas. Well, if we move it to the right, we're going to see all the darker area. Can you see just under the rocks there? It just kind of opens up and breathes uh, and gives the image much more details. Again, something that I want to mention, uh, this is the way that I work in general to balance out images. So, you know, highlight slider to the left, shadow to the right, minimal contrast. And these are general adjustments to balance your images out when you have some um, issues with perhaps the, the lighting or the way that you were taking the photos. Although the beauty of the creative apps is that there is no right or wrong. If you want to take an artistic take on your image and you want to make, you know, a, perhaps a more dramatic look, so you really want these shadows to come through and really make this mysterious little cave almost, you know, disappear or look really dark for whatever reason for your project, that's absolutely up to you. There is no wrong way of doing so. Uh, so you, all you have to do is simply use the slider to uh, adjust and refine the image uh, as, you, as you desire. Now, um, what is the difference between the uh, highlights and the whites or the blacks? So, as we've seen, the highlights control the brightness of the brighter areas, the shadows control the brightness of the darker areas, while the whites and the blacks, in this case, I'm going to start by the whites, just because it's the next slider, controls the absolute value of your brighter areas. So, in this case, look what happens. Uh, because it's an absolute change to the entire area, it's going to make the overall image really, really bright. So it's not only looking at the brighter areas, but it's also making the shadows and all the image brighter. And look what happens. We risk to really, really, uh, you know, start to uh, eat details from the image and we're going to lose it in the white. And there is a fantastic way in which you can learn how to be careful. And again, I'm going to give a shout out to Asus. I don't know if he's still in the chat, but I learned that from him. So um, it's good to give credit when learning things. And all you have to do is to hold the magic option key, which will be uh, Alt key on your windows. So look what happens. I'm going to go ahead and hold my option key and then I'm going to move the slider. Everything becomes black. What happens? So what happened is that the Lightroom has created um, an overlay, in this case in black, that allows us to see when we're going to start to lose our pixel in the white. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a bigger change so you can see all this pixel getting burned and uh, disappearing. And because we don't want make that to happen, all you have to do is to make sure that you carefully drag the slider up to when there is no little dot. I mean, I can see some little ones over here, but they're very, very minimal. That means that, you know, that's still that's still uh, a safe way of working uh, with balancing the overall brighter values. And the same with the blacks. If you do use the blacks, you can move again to the right or to the left. And in case, in this case, you're going to be controlling the overall value of the darker pixels, of the black pixels. Again, we have the same risk of completely losing details. Um, and again, if you're looking for these textures of the rocks that you can see here, we're going to be able to get that without using the black. So, you know, don't be afraid to run through each slider uh, before uh, moving forward. So again, hold the option key. That will be Alt key if you're working on a Windows and click on the slider. And as you can see, in this case, the overlay will be white and we're going to see um, the point of in which we're going to stop simply when we're going to have this little darker or colored area appearance. That means that we are basically erasing this pixel and we're losing them into the dark, into the darkness. Um, so in this case, the image was slightly overexposed. Um, so I think that that was, you know, allow us to give a little bit more um, of a play with the image. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, see back in the chat if there is any questions, what everybody's doing. Uh, we have Sven from Sweden. Bruce, let me know if you um, if if my reply to your question was OK. If you have any other questions, please feel free to jump on it. 
and I can also see Umacron from the Neanderthal, uh, from the Netherlands, Neanderthals, what am I saying? <laughs> Sorry, Umacron, and nice to see you. Ant from North Carolina. I have a friend that uh, is called Ant, but I don't know if it's you. Um, but I mean, we're all friends. I just would like to know if it's the person that I know in person. Christelle from the south of France. Um, hello, nice to see you. Bonjour, um, or bonsoir, because I think from this side of the world is uh, already 8, nearly 9 p.m. So bonsoir, Christelle. Um, show up. Please bring, bring Dag McKellen. Yes, we're going to have to shout it out at the amazing Adobe Live Angels. Valdair saying is in Pato Branco, which means white uh, duck. It's a weird name of a city. Uh, but it's in the state of Paraná, south of Brazil. Super cool. We have Bernadette watching from Scotland. Scottish Italian. That's super cool. Grandmother from Braga, Italia. Fantastic. Nice to see you. Another fellow um, UK. Laura from Copenhagen. Laura, nice to see you. And... Val, yes, that's an amazing suggestion. I agree. Fantastic. Yes, so let's keep going. I think that there is no more question. Um, again, if you're watching from, I can see the chat on YouTube moving. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure to head on behance.net slash live. That's the only chat that I can see. And uh, we have uh, Jean from Peru, Megan from Western Canada. That's an amazing international community. I absolutely love to see let me know let me know i'm super excited to see this uh wonderful international community here at adobe live again use the chat to share and ask question i'm here always super happy to to help as i can we can talk about business design photos and uh, soon photoshop and illustrator as well but let's move forward i'm just gonna have a little bit of water if you see my stream i always drink like a camel <laughs> And here we are, ready to move forwards into our second section, which will be uh, colors. And I want to stick to this photo, um, and then we're going to move into the second one. So feel free to keep voting on the poll. Um, we have a poll created by the amazing Val here in the chat. Again, if you want to vote, you need to head on behance.net slash live in order to see the result of the poll. Uh, you can vote between uh, uh, for the next photo that we're going to be editing. If to jump, probably going to do it on the phone. We're actually going to edit next uh, photo. Now that we're going to get comfortable, I'm going in nice and slow so everybody can pick up and learn all the best of the uh, adjustments and the sliders. And then we're going to move into the mobile version and we're going to see where those sliders are located. So once we get to know them a little bit better, we're going to learn how to use them on the mobile so you can literally take a photo and edit it on the go on your phone. Fantastic. Let's move on into the color um, here. And as you can see, we already have some adjustment. If we do want to reset them, all you have to do, again, as I mentioned, uh, press the option control key and then click on the label to uh, reset them and click as shot. Or another super cool thing that you can do is to double click on each slider uh, to reset it. Now, uh, temperature and tint as you can see uh, they do a different thing they uh, in fact the temperature and tint um, are gonna go ahead and um, give some adjustments on two different areas one is the temperature of course is gonna make your image cooler or warmer as you can see in fact it's gonna um, add some blue tint or uh, some yellow and both of them though temperature and tint as i say they add different tints to the image and they are there to help and contrast um, in case of uh, some color cast color casts for those of you who don't know what you know what color cast is uh what color cast is a color cast are some um, color overlays that are usually generated either by the uh, location of the image so maybe you have you know like in this case like the sun was really sh really shining in front of the camera so in terms of actually taking the shot 
uh, the image would have caused some you know maybe white overlay or a little bit of a cooler look because we have the blue of the water so it can be either a reflection maybe a fluorescent or a light next to the camera those can create the what is called a color cast so an overlay of a color that um, is going to make your image not look realistic and by adjusting the temperature and the tint uh, we're going to be able to balance it out so you know in this case if we really want to make this uh, land look like a desert and super hot and that's you know probably the reality of it because usually summer in Italy is super hot you can move the slider to the right to make it warmer or if you want to make it cool maybe look as like as the end of September and again it's totally depending on your mood your topic you can move the slider slightly to the to the uh, left to bring up some more uh, of the cooler tones uh, the tint will balance the green and magenta so again usually we can add a little bit more of a green tone if you're looking for making a vintagey effect to your image i will usually go towards a warmer and almost that burnt sort of film uh, sort of feel but again here we're looking just to make it as realistic as possible uh, so in this case again very subtle adjustment as well and bruce is saying Yes, thank you, Gladi. The alt option tips was new to me. Yes, we're going to jump into uh, the local adjustment with another photo in just a second. Fantastic. But yeah, keep your question coming. I want to see question in the chat um, or just share your love, as I said, with a blue heart. I always love to see this blue heart, especially when we're in Photoshop and Lightroom. Everything is everything is blue. <laughs> right. So next sliders are vibrance and saturation. Now, I think that there is a very specific reason why vibrance comes before saturation. As I said, I always try to attend first the sliders on top and then the slider below. Vibrance and saturation are overall, overall in terms of, you know, what they do and what they do is they increase or decrease the intensity of use of colors. Uh, pretty much the same thing. But there is a very big difference, which is very important when working with um, you know, photos, especially the one that contains photos um, with the skin tones. So the vibrance, the main difference between vibrance and, vibrance and saturation is that uh, if while the saturation will bring the overall intensity of the colors, um, make it a more intense, so, you know, much, much more vivid and brighter, or, you know, can make your image completely desaturated, so black and white, vibrance work in a more uh, a different way in fact protects all the oversaturated pixels and skin tones in this case look what happens if i if i uh, push the slider to the right the green almost becomes yellow so we almost burn this pixel in their intensity of the saturation while if we move the slider to the right with the vibrance we already protect those saturated uh, pixels that are on the rocks and on the green areas um, and you know we're not going to create an oversaturated image so i always go ahead and use the vibrance first in order to make sure that we uh, get as much as we can while protecting the pixels and then we move into the saturation after if needed to just give a little bit more of an extra punch fantastic and that's our colors uh, you can always uh, toggle the visibility of the effect uh, by pressing and holding down the little eye icon which is a little bit invisible here but is located on the right of the panel so if we click and hold we can see the before and after of each single panel so again same for the light and i'm going to zoom out so we can see the entire photo um, and if you want to see the and before and after of e of the overall adjustments that we've done we can click on this little icon here that will show us the original photo and look already just you know i'm going a little slow because i really want to go and talk through um the different sliders and the reason why we're using it but you know we already just by moving few sliders already create a massive difference in a photo it went from a dull photo um a little bit overexposed very white into bringing the color of nature's up but let's focus on this beautiful sea i love to make this sea color really pop or maybe the sky how do we do that? Uh, under color, we have two other very fantastic 
friends here, which are the color mixers and the color gradient. Oh, finally, we have this lovely uh, instruction coming. Those are the ones that I was mentioning before. So usually when you hover on a label, um, pretty much every Adobe app that happens also in the Photoshop in particular with the different panels, you'll be able to see this lovely animated preview that let you know what that tool is about. And also you have a lovely description that helps you to understand more. And when we over on the color mix, so we can see that we have access to a greater control on each different color. And let's get started by that, by doing so. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see you can actually select each different color. Here we have reds, oranges, yellows, green and blues. And of course, that will affect that color inside the image. So bear in mind that it's not going to be just one selected areas, but it's going to be that color inside the entire image. And I'm going to start by this little aqua color because it's the color mainly of the sea. And I'm going to zoom in because I really want to uh, see how this effect take place. So we're already starting to move into a degree of a little bit more of localized, but this is just in terms of color. So again, we're still going to work. We're still working on the global edits. So the, the edits are going to take place inside the entire image, but we're moving on controlling each single color right now, rather than just brighter areas and darker areas like we did for the light before. So once we select the color that we want to start to um, adjust and edit, the first thing that you want to notice is that we have three different sliders here. Uh, one is called U, the other is called Saturation, and then Luminance. So as their title says, the U will change the actual color. So in this case, look at the C. If we turn the U to the green, we'll have a more sort of aqua greenish color. And if we move towards the blue, darker blue, we have a very dark C. And what if we want to make this dark blue even bluer? Um, what we have to do here is perhaps to bump the saturation if you want, and then also bring down the luminance. So we really want to make this water look dark, or maybe not. We want to make it look super nice and crystalline. So in this case, we're going to move the slider on the other side and increase the saturation of the green and also the lightness. So see, that also helps in the reflection. And let's see if we have any question in the chat. Luis Madrigal, loving this stream, so useful. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have the chance to go and have time and talk about this um, little slider one by one. I think, you know, it's very intuitive. And by the way, once you get a, a go at it and we're going to move forward. So, you know, after we go through this, we're going to move fast. But I think that is important to understand why to use one slider and the other, because when we're going to use our mobile, now that you know what you're doing and you know, most importantly, what each slider does, you're going to be like a magician in just a second. You're just going to, you know, just move your slider. You know, you know exactly what you want. You know exactly how to get it uh, just because you know exactly what, what each slider does. So I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I absolutely love these Lightroom editing services. Jean-Pierre um, asks, what color profile do you recommend to obtain the most natural photo possible? So Jean-Pierre, as I um, mentioned, um, I'm, I'm looking at the chat. Bruce say, Adobe heard you, Clady. Uh, Bruce, I'm not sure what that question was uh, for. So... But yeah, let me know in the chat. I'm just thinking, I was like, what did I say? That, um, but yeah, let me know in the chat. Uh, Jean-Pierre, to reply to your question, um, I always start with the Adobe Color um, profile. That's the first sort of um, ed ed edits that I apply in terms of managing information of a raw file. Um, I would choose an Adobe Color profile and then go from there. Although that's a very difficult question to um, answer to because it everything depends on the status of your original photo. So, you know, you can have a very dark photo and we're going to go through some of them. And Luis is saying, yeah, natural is also subjective. I believe that what Jean-Pierre is probably um, saying is that how to make it as realistic. So, you know, of what you can see with the uh, human eye. So what is the exact visual that you have of the photo and then what the camera captures? It uh, entirely depends on the quality of the photo. And of course, what are the settings in terms of white balance and so on. And uh, um, let's move on here because uh, we're going to have some more fun uh, adjusting the colors. 
we can have, for example, some fun with the yellow. You know, I can see a lot of yellow. I wanted the image to be warmer. I don't want it to be overall cold, but I think that there is too much yellow, especially into the green. So in this case, I'm gonna move into the green color. And as you can see, the U goes from yellow to darker green. I'm gonna slide and move it to the right. And I, again, I like to move, move it like quite dramatically so you can see the big difference. So again, you know, if the place in this case you know, is nice and next to the seas, uh, Mediterranean, um, mild and humid. So if, as much as it gets really hot and dry, we still have a nice, bright, beautiful uh, green color. But if it was, for example, a little bit more of a, a desert area and you, you know, want to ignore the, the sea and it's just perhaps I was just masking it with my hand, but I'm <laughs> unfortunately you cannot see it. I can do it just like that. If we, for example, want to transform this in just a, a desert scene and ignoring that is next to the sea uh, uh, seaside, uh, we can bring everything to the left and also perhaps even the yellow, you know, making it very, very yellow and very sort of deserty looking like everything is dried. Uh, so again, that's how you can manipulate the image. Always double click to reset it. We know that's not the case. South of Italy, as much as it get a little dry, is also very beautifully and humid. So I will tend in this case to be more faithful to the actual vegetation of the local area uh, to bring a little bit more of a darker green into the green. So again, I select the green and I'm gonna go ahead and move the slider towards the right to bring in uh, these colors. Um, and uh, I can also do that with the blues. So again, if I want to affect, uh, for example, the sky by making the, you know, the color of the sky rather uh, more or less blue, you can see that that also affect the sea. So how we're going to do, um, now we're going to jump right away before we move into the effects since we're talking about color. Uh, oh, I can see some Spanish in the chat. Val, <laughs> Val saying keep the chat in English. Yes, please keep the chat in English uh, so everybody can understand. Um, but uh, I love, and by the way, that's something that is super cool. I do understand Spanish, so saludos. Uh, pero, I was going to say, but uh, everybody, you know, we want everybody to participate. So please make sure to uh, say hi and ask your questions and make your comments in English so we can all benefit uh, from this interaction. And uh, let, let me know in the chat how many languages do you know? Val, how many languages do you speak? I um, do Italian, uh, English, French, and Spanish. Um, so uh, I think I'm on four, but let me know. I'm sure that in the chat, we have such an international community. Let me know. Um, let me know in the chat how many languages you speak. And if you would like to share as well, uh, let me know uh, which language do you speak. So I always get really excited with such international community. But in the meantime, while you let me know in the chat, I want to start to talk about these edits, in particular, uh, these local edits. So in order to move from the global edits, which are here on top, into the um, uh, local edits, we can move into the brush gradient or the radial gradient um, so in this case I'm just gonna start with the first one which is the brush and all you have to do is to either press the letter B on your keyboard or click on the brush little icon here and then the first thing that I do usually is to scroll down and make sure that reset sliders automatically is selected in fact when we make an edit especially in the past in uh, the past versions of uh, live room and usually the camera row engine the edits the the global edits will stick will be sticky and be uh attached to the local edits as well now if you do click on the little selection where it says and i'm going to zoom in so you can actually see it's, it's at the very bottom of the panel reset sliders automatically this is going to bring your um local adjustments uh, to a neutral position so we can go ahead and be very specific and apply uh, different different edits to the area which is the entire point of doing a, a local adjustment rather than a global adjustment because that area needs a different kind of attention in my camera i see the his histogram i believe is called is the similar option in lightroom yes we can see the histogram um you can I believe see it right here from the three dots. If you click here on the three dots, you'll be able to show the histogram. And uh, here it is, it shows here at the top. 
and you can also um, uh, clip it or perhaps hide it again um, by going back into three dots. So if you want to follow your camera settings and understand how those edits apply, I think that's very useful to keep your uh, Instagram is Instagram. <laughs> histogram um, app. I think that that's a little bit more an advanced um, feature. So is there Bernadette? Again, click on the three dots to access more options and simply uh, click on show Instagram in order to uh, show the histogram, which is will appear right away at the top. I'm just going to hide it for now, just because it tends to be confusing, especially for beginner user. But if you want to have a look and check out what happens at your image while you create the edits to your histogram, it's fantastic to do so. Um, Val is saying we like to keep the chat in English because it's the language of moderators, ask guests. Yes, absolutely. We love to be able to communicate all together. So um, just when I ask, you know, what language do you speak? You can please let me know in English which language do you speak. Uh, but I can see that, you know, everybody's already doing. Luis is saying he speaks English, Spanish fluently, beginner French, and would love to learn Italian. Um, fantastic. So let me know if there anybody else that speaks more than one, lang one language. We definitely know that uh, Jean-Pierre, I guess, speaks Spanish as well. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Let's keep the chat in English, but you can tell me which language do you know just by typing the language while, skip, while speaking in English. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's move on here on this local adjustment with the brush. So the brush will allow you to create area to literally paint. And in order to do so, as you can see, we can already have this circle here appearing over the image which we can control and uh, as you already can see my uh, little brush options were already um, open i'm gonna zoom in so you can see and show more control so all you have to do is to click on the little down pointing arrow which is above the size slider oh val speaks japanese that's super exciting. I didn't know. I always would have loved, loved, loved to visit Japan. That's like one of my dream destination. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the down pointing arrow to show more controls for our brush. And now that we know how to open that up, we can see what these controls are about. So as you can see, we have the size, which went to a gigantic 100. I like to keep the size nice and small so you can be more selective. And, you know, of course, the smaller is the size of your brush, the more you can go ahead and have more control on the area that you're going to paint on and select. Uh, the feather will uh, adjust the edges of your brush. So if we have a very high settings in your feather, that means that, as you can see, that's the outside circle getting bigger. So that means that we're going to have a very smooth brush, in fact, to control the hardness of the edges. Well, if we bring the feather to zero, we can see that there is no double circle. In fact, we're going to have a very sharp um, brush. It basically works like Photoshop brushers, brushes. I like to keep it, um, you know, around like 30. Usually, of course, it depends on the size of your brush as well. Uh, but I like to give it a little bit of a feather. So we have a little bit of a smooth gradient when creating adjustment. It's not just like an abrupt uh, from A to B difference. And I see we have a question from Liam. Liam, native Dutch, fluent, professional English, small German, rather new to Adobe Lightroom. What is Adobe Lightroom primarily optimally used for? So the Adobe Lightroom service um, is the professional uh, service that allows you to uh, organize, create, edit, share, and store photos. So again, Lightroom is all about editing images, organizing them. If you, you know, this stream is going to be able, uh, you're going to be able to watch this stream on a replay. Uh, I don't know if you just joined right now the stream, but you'll be able to watch the beginning um, and rewatch it where I go through the, you know, the details on how to organize the images as well. And um, so far we've been through the light and color edits and we're now moving into the local uh, edits. But yeah, so um, Lightroom will allow you very easily to change and edit your photos, organize them and share them. And we're going to jump into a mobile in literally perhaps five to 10 minutes. Um, and the beauty is that you can uh, pretty much work from 
anywhere. You can work on the go because Lightroom is not only available with your Creative Cloud subscription, but is also available as a mobile app or also for tablets. So you can literally um, use the entire images. And by the way, if you work, you know, you're going to see the image that we're editing now. Once I open my app, because of the Creative Cloud environment and everything being connected uh, will be already updated. So whatever we do on our mobile is available on our desktop and vice versa, which is fantastic. Beautiful. Um, right, so. Do you have an estimate date for Lightroom Classic to be native to Apple Silicon? Jean-Pierre, I'm afraid I don't belong to the as more uh, in the the I would say um, the people that the the sacred circle that knows all this preview information about Apple and Lightroom. So I do not have uh, this estimated date. But if someone knows Val, if you know, if anybody in the chat um, knows a little bit more, please let us know. And that's the beauty of our uh, community. But let's keep going here with our brush. Uh, I'm going to select auto mask to create a mask while we brush and I'm going to click on the plus in order to add our first selection. So in this case, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and start by selecting the sky because I want to um, make a color change just on the sky and I don't want it to affect um, the sea. So at the moment, as you can see, I'm just painting and we have a pin dot drop that is a literally stating that there is a brush there, but we don't see anything. Why? Because usually the overlay of the mask is hidden. Now it's very simple to show it. All you have to do is to press on the O letter O on your keyboard and right away you start to see the selection that you made. Exactly as I did, I went around and I made this selection. So that definitely tells me that I missed all the top areas. So I can go ahead and start painting in order to make sure that I add all the areas. And now you can just go and, and again, I want to jump into the mobile real quick. So I'm just going to go fast here. But my suggestion is when you work on your photos, if you want to be very precise, of course, zoom in. And then you can go ahead and use your brush to really refine your image uh, just like so. So, you know, make sure to take your time when you're working on your, on your image. Again, at the moment, I'm just trying to uh, give you a little bit more of a general feel to it. Here it is. Um, and I'm going to make the size of the brush definitely smaller and the image bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm adding pixel to my selections. Now, what happened if you're clicking and by mistake you move and create the selection? So um, all you have to do is either press Command Z and that will undo your action like in any other app. So we literally um, made uh, the image. So whatever, whatever addition that we created into the mask, we just delete it by simply undoing. Or uh, let's say that you create a few and you just you know want to remove a particular area from this local pixel they are selecting. All you have to do is to click onto the um, eraser icon, which is located right next to the brush here at the top. And again, I'm going to zoom in so you can see the icon nice and big. And uh, click on it and then from here you can go ahead and move into uh, the erasing the mask just like so. Also you can see that the difference um, you, you're going to be able to notice right away if you're working by adding pixel or removing it because the little center of the color um, is sorry the center of the brush changes from a plus if you're adding into a minus if you're using the eraser. Um, Val, you are amazing with these information links. Thank you so much. So Val, uh, give some information regarding um, the release of, with uh, Lightroom updates and uh, the Silicon uh, Apple. Thank you so much. And also Valdair um, says that Adobe has a page on HelpX, which is the uh, um, usually um, website where you can find so many information about Adobe apps and updates where it shows the current status of the apps and the M1 and of course the arrows as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much Val Dair and Val for the informations and the links as well. 
Right, so what happened? Now that we made the selection um, and we know the pixel that we've selected and we're perhaps happy with it, hopefully um, you want to like, you know, maybe zoom in to make sure that um, you have, you know, just refined, not like me, you probably take your time and refine your selection a little bit better throughout your image for the sky. You can press the letter hole to then um, hide it. Now, um, that's another question that I get asked very often. What if the image below is already red? Why am I, you know, how am I going to be able to see the mask? Well, that's super, super easy. Um, Lightroom, already thought about it. The amazing theme behind Lightroom allows you to switch the color of your um, mask overlay in order to create contrast. So let's say that the background was already red and you're not able to make a difference between the mask selection and the actual background. All you have to do is to hold the shift key while pressing the same uh, letter O, which is the usually the shortcut for the overlay and just click and that will be able to toggle uh, between the color green and the color red. And that will ensure you to have some enough contrast uh, for you to uh, be able to see your mask overlay. Right, so now we're gonna hide it. We know that it's placed correctly. And uh, uh, once we've hidden it, we wanna make sure also that we are gonna start to play with the mask itself. Here it is. So uh, once we have our mask selected, all we have to do here, what we wanna do here is to, oops. Oh, it looks like I deleted. Let me go back into it is there fantastic so um make sure that we select it remember uh, once you select uh, your mask you're gonna have a blue dot with a white dot inside if you, the dot is just blue just like so it means that it's deselected and perhaps it's because you want to add another uh, brush stroke so make sure to click on the brush to select it and now it's time to start to add um, our changes. So in this case, what we can perhaps can do is change the color of our sky uh, by changing the U and changing the saturation. And as you can see, uh, we are making changes to the, the sky, but that's not affecting any other area of the image. And that's the beauty of using all these local edits. As the entire, as the word says, local edits will affect only the local area that you selected through your brush or maybe your gradient on your um, radial gradient. And you're gonna go ahead and just play with the sky as much as you want, just like so. Fantastic. So um, again, you can change the U, you can change the saturation and um, as much as you want. And of course you can do, you know, you can add as many areas as you want. In this case, I am painting with the same area. So I'm applying with the same brush. So I'm adding areas to the image, just like so. If you want to undo and create a different settings for another area. So let's say I want to make this green area less yellow, just, just over here. All you want to do is to click on the plus to create a new selection, which is brand new, just like so. And that will have its own settings. Now, uh, always make sure to scroll down and make sure that the reset slider is automatically reset. So we're not going to carry on the blue tints that we were trying to do with the sky. And we can actually press O to um, hide the overlay and we can perhaps you know change just the color of the area and that's you know, maybe a little bit better shows you um how it affects only an area but what if we don't like it and we want to get rid of it well that's really simple all we have to do is to select the pin and by the way we can also move it around so we can um, also repositioning this local uh, mask as well and if we want to get rid of it click on the delete key and it will disappear just like so. Of course, if you deleted it by mistake, command Z, I will bring it back, but we don't need that. That was just an example. Now, um, I wanna show you another way to create a local adjustment uh, besides the mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this sky mask that we created and then click on delete. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into uh, uh, the gradient which is the linear gradient to start. Of course, the gradients are the same. They work exactly the same. Instead of uh, creating a brushed effect like we did for um, with the brush tool, we're gonna have a gradient, in this case, a linear one. And uh, for the radial one, the only difference is that, of course, you know, it's gonna be within an ellipse, within a circle. So I'm just gonna show you the uh, linear one to start. 
So once you click and drag, uh, you're going to have your gradient coming on two direction, either top and bottom, or if you wish to, uh, left and right. For this photo, I'm going to uh, use this left and right gradient, just like so, uh, because I want to affect in particular this area of the image. And again, you can also uh, press on the O key in order to see which area of the gradient is affect. Clary, can you mask on the mobile app as well? Yes, that's why I'm showing you all these beautiful tools because once we're going to jump on the mobile app, we're going to just go super quickly. And by the way, we still have to do Photoshop and animation so much. I need to, um, um, I love Lightroom too much, um, but I need to move forward because we have so much work to do still. And by the way, as you can see here, uh, you can invert the mask so you can choose to which direction to apply the direction in which your mask is applied is where your adjustments are going to be applied. And as before, you can uh, erase areas. So, for example, if I don't want um, if I don't want the gradient to be applied overall, what I'm going to do again is to make the brush a little bit um, bigger and give it a little bit more of a feather so I can just go ahead and delete all this bottom part of the image which I don't want to affect uh, with my edit because all I want to affect was that part of the sky that as we can see is very very bright so I think you know that was where the probably sun was located and I'm going to press O so you can uh, see the difference here uh, but again you know I think the gradient in the sky was too much. So how can we balance it? We can do that with this amazing gradient tool. As you can see, it just took me a second. Um, and then all I have to do here is perhaps to move into my uh, exposure. And look at that. Look how magic is that. Because we brought in... Uh, <laughs> Bernadette, so you look like you're having fun. Yeah, look how amazing it is. Like, literally, that's one of the most you know, cool tool that I have ever seen. Not only we're only localizing certain area, the area that we want. On top of it, this is already giving us a linear or a circular shape, depending of which area we are tackling of our image. And then it's giving us this gradient effect right away. So it blends in with our photos beautifully. And again, as you can see, I can make this extremely bright. So, you know, if you really want to, maybe there is a UFO coming. Uh, so we have this really bright area. You can make it even brighter by lightening the exposures or you can um, make it extremely dark that looks like a thunder is coming from in this case i'm just going to try to keep it balanced that was the overall goal and as you can see uh we have done that in just a, a click let me know and give me a thumbs up in the chat i think that that's one of the uh, most useful tools the in terms of the local adjustments and the uh, gradient rate linear gradient by the way let me know in the chat so far if you preferred well, should we do another poll? Because I'm about to jump into the previous one because we're going to go into the phone and find out which photo we're going to be tackle next and tackling next. And then um, let me know so far. Maybe we should create another poll. I think it's time for another poll. Well, let me know. Um, in order to understand which slider do you like the most? Do you like to play more with the light, with the color, or with the local adjustments? Those are the ones that we've seen so far. Uh, there are some more global. You can always jump back into the global, by the way, by clicking on the top icon here. And uh, you can also see that before and after, look how much, like that's the same photo. Can you even imagine? And I'm not a photographer, so anybody can do this. If I can do this, anybody can do this. Um, again, what we looked for is the light colors and we have more coming through, which are usually effects and details. I'm gonna go, real real quick into um the effects again just because i mentioned before the texture as the word says it's just going to give you more textures be careful if you're using skin tones and if you have faces because i usually try to go on the other side in order to smooth uh the skin tones but if you wish to you know bring more texture make sure to bring the sliders to the right uh while clarity is going to bring out all the mid-tones and the dehaze as the word says is going to take that haze away if we take it to the right and um, had some fake haze, that atmospheric effect, if you drag it to the left. Uh, the vignette effect, that's a very popular effect, is used to create a little bit more of a focus on your image, just like so. 
And again, I always like to uh, add a little bit more grain. I like to zoom in to see always, uh, you know, how much grain do I use. But I believe that, you know, adding some grain into your image allows you to um, get rid of the fake effect looks. Let's bring it back to, to zero. Um, we have more texture, so we have already some, you know, dots coming through and also with the clarity that usually happens. But what happens if we, you know, perhaps our decision is to make our images smoother. It looks so digital, so fake. How do we bring it back and make it more realistic, even if we want a smoother effect? So we don't want all the crispy details, but we want to make it real. Well, grain usually allows you to do that by giving a little bit of this dot definition. So even if you go for a smoother texture, I always suggest to add some grain to your images. And look like looks like I've been quite heavy with the vignette here. I'm going to open it up a little bit more. And we're going to talk about the optics and the geometry directly into the mobile. Otherwise, time is running out. I don't know. I was afraid. I didn't have enough things to do. And I can't believe that I just done a photo. If you look at my collection, we can go back into our photo panels. Um, in my mind, I wanted to edit all this photo. And also we have Maria Elena waiting for um, her um, micro... Um, micro uh veg micro veg superfood micro veg um to for for her um instagram channel so hopefully we're gonna we're gonna be able to cover everything um i'm looking at the time and i'm being super conscious i can be here <laughs> now we learned that two hours is not even enough even by myself bernard that says the color pop out for sure big difference val yes light color global yeah and light color uh and local adjustment yeah that's correct because light and color are part of the global so um maybe you, you know we can do light color brush or gradient linear gradient because those are the four that we went in depth so far so light adjustment color adjustment um the brush which is a local adjustment or the linear gradient Thumbs up, let me know, and Val is going to post the link. In the meantime, before we jump into my mobile and we have a look at the all other different photo, uh, ready to edit here. I'm clicking on the wrong computer. I've got three computers here. I'm <laughs> working on the same time. Again, we had some photos to edit. We have more south of Italy, Bay Area, some Spain, and some photo of me and my house, and some photo of the cocktails, some cocktails and food as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into... Um, the previous poll and I'm going to go ahead and refresh it real quick to see the result of that poll and it looks like that we have um, a 50% of South of Italy a 44% of photo of Clady in the poll so okay so it looks like it's more more nature more nature coming fantastic right okay before doing so I'm going to open up my phone and uh, we're going to take all these fantastic edits into the mobile and we're going to move fast. I'm not going to go and talk through everything. Remember, you can always um, go back and watch the replay for everything that we've done. So um, that should be super fast. So here it is. I have my mobile here. That's an iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I'm going to go back into... Um, here it is. That hopefully should work. Yay, we are into my phone. So as you can see, I have a folder that is called Creativity Anywhere. And in this folder, uh, I've added all the images. By the way, behind me is a photo that I took of Valencia, the sky, everything done in Photoshop, Lightroom. That's, you know, that's, that's how magic all the colors, I've changed everything. You know, you can really take your photo to the next level and apply so many fantastic artistic look to your images. Now, um, as you can see, as I said, I called my folder creativity anywhere because that's the beauty of having those amazing apps on your mobile you can be on your train i usually do it on the plane that's something you know i used to travel uh very often to either australia or the bay area and those are very long flights sometimes of over 14 hours so you know you don't necessarily have internet that's a fantastic way of being you know sometimes disconnected and what i do i literally plug my phone on a charger and spend pretty much half of my flight editing photos on lightroom you can literally do it anywhere 
of course it will update it as lo as soon as we um, move into uh, having internet but um, as you can see we have also available rush photoshop express camera um capture uh, which will allow you to get text color and much more we're hopefully gonna have time to see that in photoshop and of course our lovely behance app also available for mobile but let me go ahead and open um the Lightroom and as you can see we can already recognize right away a panel that we know now very important if you want to take good photo you can use Lightroom to take photo directly from Lightroom all you have to do is to press on the little camera here and you'll be able to uh, take the photo directly in Lightroom which will allow you to create a row image so really high quality photos so I will suggest to do so in order to um, have a little bit more of a, you know, use your older images so you don't you don't need control on your older photos. You can just bring them in by clicking on the left icon there. Fantastic, but as you can see, I'm gonna go back into my library here to edit exactly the same that we were seeing inside uh, the same photo panel that we had on the left. And um, Luis is saying cool graffiti. And that's me. That's a little a photo that makes uh, everybody jumps up a little. So can you imagine I was working at the UN <laughs> and then I was painting at night uh, and then graphic design saved my life, bringing these colors and um, all my communication skills together. Right. So let's move on to a different photos. And because time is running, I can't believe we have like half an hour. Maybe what I can do here is to start to work on some of the little greens uh, from uh, our lovely friends, Mari. So the entire goal is to help her out and create some cool, um, uh, some cool um, images for her social media. I'm gonna go ahead and have a, a little look at the micro plant food. And I'm gonna jump real quick into my um, screen. As you can see, uh, Mari just started this um, microved Milano, which is uh, a, a startup. They are growing these superfoods. And she just, you know, we were generally talk, talking about photos and she wanted to learn like, Claudia, I, you know, me and my husband were taking all these photos, but you know, they don't look good. I want to put it on Instagram. How do you do it? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk about Lightroom. So I'm going to give you a shout out. They're just starting. So, you know, I don't think they're able to take order. There is no website yet, um, but that's the reality. That's what I love about Adobe Light. We can talk about real stuff and we can learn together how to make it happen. So. If you're not a designer, if you're not a photographer, but maybe you run a business, you can use this amazing app to create your own photos. And I'm gonna jump back into my mobile. And those are the photos that Mari sent me um, that are from, from their home, you know? There, there is a, a lot of light. You can definitely see all the adjustment that we talked about so far, so much that we can do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of these photo. Photos perhaps, um, oh, I love this one, but. I'm going to go ahead and select this one because it looks really dull um, and it looks like there is a lot of lights in the middle and then there is not much coming from the side. So there is a lot of balancing to do. And I, I love the fact that it's like a longer perspective image. It just makes me think that we can do so much more with it in terms of uh, maybe using it. Uh, maybe we can split it into three and do like a little horizontal grid or like a swipe. We've got 30 minutes to do this mission in Lightroom and then jump into Photoshop. So we're going to do that. And by the way, in the chat, we have Rob Zilla. Nice to see you go and shake Rob uh, Zilla out. He's a Adobe live streamer, amazing illustrator, a lot of illustration about sport. If you haven't go and click on his profile yet. And if you have any question regarding this um, um, micro veg, Mari, I know you speak English. Mari lived in New York for a very long time. She recently relocated back in Milan. Please feel free to give some info regarding this micro, micro um, superfood and, uh, you know, how this photo are going to help you on your social media while I work here. So for more info regarding um, the, the micro veg, you can ask Mari. She's there in the chat. She knows all the hair and her husband who's a chef. They know all the science behind it. So um, let me go ahead and see. Lightroom does not have the calibration panel. I like Room C. How do you replace the panel to arrive to similar equal edition? Um, 
jump here we're going to look at it in just a second so once we select the image what we want to do is right away as you can see our interface and our mobile changes completely um, and in the meantime i'm just going to jump real quick into the landing before we keep going uh just because i'm i'm a f i wanted to make sure that i <laughs> took off uh, my data so i was just a little afraid that's the time in which my dad usually go to bed and it rings me up, so I just wanted to make sure to take the, the data off so I cannot have any call coming up while we stream. And uh, um, as I can see, the first thing, again, we have first uh, the library with all the photos panel, and then once you select your album, you can go ahead and click on the photo. And once you select the photos, everything that happens on the right panel that we see in all the adjustments with the lights and colors is actually happening on the bottom. So at the top, we'll be able to have different options. So if we go into the edit, this is the rate and review, what we talked about before in terms to classify the quality of your image with a, a star or if it's a rejected or approved image. And here you can add also some keywords. So for example, um, here I can add um, micro uh, veg, or really anything that you want. I'm just gonna stick on micro for now. And then on the top, we can see the cloud that is already updating. That means that all the information that I'm editing here on the mobile are already getting transferred to my laptop, to my desktop. So everything that is happening here is happening back into Lightroom desktop as well. So I'm gonna start and go back into uh, uh, the edit mode. So again, click on the down pointing arrow and then select edit to make that happen. And as you can see, I'm tapping live. So this is the phone that I'm working from live. And I'm gonna move on right away because now we know what we're doing. So we can go ahead and start to play with the colors. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on all the effect in order to reset it. Uh, you can always click on the three dots here and uh, make sure that you can also um, have the different view option. I remember there was a question regarding the uh, histogram before. If you want to watch and have a look at the histogram live on your mobile, you can do that. I believe Bernadette asked that question, if I remember correctly. Uh, you can show the info overlays. In this case, show and hide the histogram. You see it's going to happen at the very top of the phone there as well. Again, that's a little bit more advanced, but it's there, available for you to see. Um, if you want to just by clicking on the three dots to view more options. I'm going to quickly reset some of these options because I was already having a little fun with this photo. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring it back. And then we're going to start because now we know what we're doing already. Now we know everything about these lighters. So we can really quickly see how to start to adjust these photos. So for example, we can see already that there is quite an overexposure in the middle and then there is the darker areas on the side so we're going to start this time uh, upside down we're going to start from the local adjustment because i think that is super cool that the local adjustment are also available on your mobile app and again that's what i'll do on my plane oops i just went into my instagram and uh, um, here it is. In order to start with your um, adjustment, we're going to go local adjustment. Uh, you can see that is the very first icon where we have our selective edits. And in our selective edits, uh, in this case, we're going to start by clicking on the plus to choose the selective edit that we're going to choose that we're going to use. And as you can see, um, here we already know what we're talking about because we already just seen them on the desktop version we have a brush that would allows you to um, paint and create this overlay so in this case i'm just going to go ahead and paint on the middle of the image and then from here i can go ahead and look at the lights which i know already that is going to give me option with our exposure with our contrast highlights shadows so we're going to take care of the brightness of the overall image when we talk about the exposure and we did say that it was a little bit too bright so in this case all we have to do is to change the brightness and the exposure a little bit darken it down just to make a little bit more uh flatter light it looks like the light was right in the middle and then maybe we can bump up the contrast as well 
Um, and again, what we said before, if we move the highlight slider to the left, uh, we're going to start to reveal some of these hidden details. And by the way, you can also zoom on the image so we can see better what's going on there. So highlights to the left to reveal and bring out uh, some of the hidden details that are hidden into the highlights because the highlight slider, as I said before, controls the brightness of the brighter areas. And then you can do the same with the shadows. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go right and probably we can see here from the darker areas on the side. I'm going to move on both sides for you to see um, that that's going to make a change. And by the way, I said something silly here because, of course, no change is happening on the side. Because remember, we are working on the selective edits here. So this is the only area that we are toggling. Um, once you're happy with it, uh, you can simply oops, click on the little tick, which is here at the bottom in order to accept the changes. And then, uh, you know, we can move forward to some global edits. And by the way, if you click on the selective edits and the plus, you'll see the radial and the gradient as well, which they come exactly as we did before, as you can see. And if you want to delete it, don't worry. All you have to do is to click on the little uh, bin icon. Well, if you want to erase it, just like we've seen before, we have the eraser tool available also on our mobile. I'm going a little quick here because we already talked through uh, each single slider uh, before, if you're just joining in, don't worry, this stream is going to be available for replay, so you can just scroll back and um, watch it again. And the reason why I'm going fast as well is because we're going to jump into Photoshop in just a second. So we're going to make the edits here, review it on the desktop, and then move into Photoshop to create some animation because that's the beauty of working with the Creative Cloud app. You have this amazing environment. It's like an ecosystem since we're talking about uh, vegetation. I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, Creative Cloud is like an ecosystem that allows you to work together with so many different apps. Right. So uh, once you're happy with your uh, with your edits, with your local adjustments, we can move on and start to uh, play with some of the global edits here. So. In this case, again, moving to the lights, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the shadow to the right. So in this case, I'm going to change the brightness of the darker areas. In this case, you can see especially the sides were quite um, uh, dark. So we can just bring all the details from there. And uh, maybe we can do the same with the highlights just to reveal some more of these details and then let's move into the color as you can see we have access here to the color mix and i'm definitely going to bring some brightness because we have all these beautiful um sprouts and marielle and i if you're there in the chat you can tell us what sort of um micro badge we're dealing with i'm not an expert all i know is that they're super concentrated of, of, you know, there is so much um, uh, energy coming with this uh, wonderful super, super food. And I know that Mari sent me some notes regarding the food. I Here they are. Uh, so they're widely used in restaurants and home cooks to enhance the flavors of the dishes and as a garment. And they are rich in color flavor and they're also considered considered superfood so mari thank you so much for the info here so we know also what we're doing <laughs> and then we can move forward into the mix and we can start uh by selecting all this color i can see here that we have this like lovely purple and you know i really want to make it uh, stand out so those are radish microgreens uh, so i really want this purple color to come through and again, all you have to do is to select the color from the color mix that allows you to have more control on each single color and then simply use your sliders in order to bring it up. So I'm going to make the green a little bit greener and uh, also bump up the saturation and look at, look at the difference here um, on your image. So we see already much more color coming through. Um, when you're done, simply Click on done in order to accept the changes. And I'm going to go back into the light because I think that um, maybe I'm going to play a little bit with the exposure. I can see the image, especially I can see that uh, what we're looking on my phone and what we're looking on the screen is slightly different. So it looks like the image on the screen, it comes much brighter. So unfortunately, you can now see the full richness of details. I don't know if it's because of my screen luminosity, if that's going to make any difference. I doubt. 
I doubt so, but hopefully you, you're able to see the, the before and after here. And by the way, in order to see the before and after really quickly, all you have to do is to simply hold on the photo. I think that, that you know, in just a few uh, seconds, we did make quite a lot of a difference. So that was the before. So that was the original photo. It was basically black and white. Uh, the photo that Mari sent me didn't allow to showcase all the beautiful colors of these micronutrients. And with Lightroom, we brought the colors out in just a few clicks. Fantastic. Now that we are happy with our image, um, we can go back into our edits, into our um, desktop version. And uh, I'm just going to go back into just real quick. If you do want to share your image, by the way, if you are um, perhaps, you know, working and sharing with other people, you have the fantastic option to export it, share it, open in camera roll. So that's how you save it into your camera and also invite people to collaborate to your image. And you access all the export uh, options here directly on the little um, icon on the top that allows you to share create a link uh, or invite people to collaborate, which is super cool. Val says, we have 15 minutes. Yes, it's time to jump into Photoshop and really transform this image into a social media asset. Um, but, you know, that's the reason why I went so slow before with the desktop, because now everything that we've seen in terms of, you know, details. And by the way, just before we go, I want to talk about the geometry real quick. I love this geometry. Um, allows you to change the way that an image looks real quick. What I usually do is to select um, the free edits, which they allow you to click and drag and position uh, lines, vertical and horizontal lines, which you can also delete, by the way, if, just like me, if you didn't create a correct one, make sure to select it and then move the point. Oops. Here it is. And that will allow you to um, make your image straighter by creating um, horizontal and vertical line. And as you can see, just by defining the horizontal line, uh, that um, Lightroom has already stretched the uh, the components of the image by making the horizontal line following the horizontal line that you've shown. And you can do also that with the, the vertical line. So this is a fantastic way um, to make your image straighter if you have issue with perspective. That's super cool. It works great also when you create photo of a building that is perhaps, you know, a little bit tilted. With this line, you'll be able to uh, bring it back together. Fantastic. When you're happy, just click on done and we are uh, done with the image. Uh, we can also see that we are able to um, use the three icons to organize it. So, for example, um, another super cool thing is that if we want to use the same settings for another photo, you can just simply click on the three dots, copy settings, and then you can select which one you want to copy out of it. So, for example, I will not add the geometry because that's very specific to a photo, but I definitely I will do the profile colors, light and effects. And then once you select and you copy it, you can just go back to another of these photos, perhaps um, maybe this one over here. And then again, click on the tree icon and then paste settings and you will have the settings applied right away. So that was the before. And that was the after with our color enhancement here. And as you can see, there are three dots moving into the little cloud. That means that it's updating on my desktop. So um, it's time to jump right away back into my desktop and then move into our um, Photoshop session. So uh, let me make sure that everything is up to date here before we leave the phone. Another way in which you can check your updates here is uh, by, oops, here it is, uh, by clicking on the little cloud, you can see there is a tick. That means that now the update is done. Fantastic. So I can jump back into my screen and here it is. The image is already updated. Uh, I can click on it and oops, let me go back into my grid and make sure I select it again uh, in order to see it. And we can see here the before and the after. So it's straightened and we got all the color coming through. But how do we transform it into uh, a social media asset? Well, all we got to do is to click on the three dots and use the edit in Photoshop. And by the way, whatever edit you make in Photoshop, if we, uh, for example, want to go a little bit more in depth with edit editings, um, you know, with colors and stuff like that, it gets updated into uh, our amazing uh, Lightroom as well. 
But what I'm going to do here is to start to change also the size of our photo. And um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you real quick what I created first, just, you know, because so you can find the reason of this last uh, few minutes. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to create all of this, but um, ideally I created a little animation um, by substituting some shapes and making the moon coming through and kind of made the little sprouts look like a mountain. So uh, the goal is to do the animation. If we do not do the animation and we just maybe create the slide, I think that's much more realistic. Um, I can show you a link uh, to my um, last year Adobe Max session, which teaches you how to create animation in Photoshop. And I have so much more regarding animation in Photoshop also on my website. So um, maybe I wouldn't need another hour, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and start to edit. So I'm going to go back into the photo. This is all possible again, thanks to the amazing creative cloud. Fantastic. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is to change the size of my canvas. In order to change the size of your canvas, all you have to do is to, um, head into your image and then canvas size. And then from here, I'm going to use 180. Uh, sorry, I'm going to use a height of 180. Oops. Let me just cancel this because it looks like I was making a wrong change. So um, I'm going to create like a swap. So three different images. Um, so what I'm going to do is to have the height, which is the height of an Instagram image of 180 which is the resolution of the image for the Instagram. But then I need to split the horizontal side in three different ones because, you know, Mari can use them as a grid. So it's going to look nice and cool on her profile or she can use it on one single image and then they are like, you know, swipeable, but they're all continuous. So in this case, for the width, I'm going to use 180 and then multiply it by three. And Photoshop does the math for me. The result is uh, 3,240 pixels. And then simply click OK and then proceed with the change in the canvas. And here it is. The canvas is exactly what I wanted, 180 by 3,240. And all I have to do here is to click on my layer and press Command-T to transform and then simply drag the corner of the bounding box in order to reposition your image here and move it inside the space that we want. We can also hover on the corner and rotate it uh, just like so. And uh, um, by the way, you can uh, always create a layout by using our amazing view. Uh, and from new, you can create a new guide layout and that will give you the possibility of splitting your image exactly in as many number as you want. So in this case, we know that we want three columns because those are going to be three different posts. The gutter, which is the space in between the columns, we can set it to zero because we want the photos to be continuously um, one next to the other. And make sure to click on the preview to see them up and in live and click on OK. Then from here, we're going to go ahead and click and hold on the crop tool to reveal the slice tool. And with the slice tool selected, we're going to proceed to click and slicing our uh, single photo here, just like so. So I'm going to go ahead and create my first slice. And then my second one. Now, I don't have much time, uh, but I would strongly recommend to zoom in. And you can see these beautiful smart guides helping us out. As you can see, it looks like I went a little bit, you know, off. And that's why I say, take your time. Make sure you select your slice uh, precisely. And then you um, use the guides to make sure that you're actually creating a slice uh, within the guides. So that will allow you to create a perfect slice that will give you a continuous image uh, within the tree. Uh, what if we want to make some more adjustment to the colors? Well, you can access the same engine to the Lightroom, which is a camera roll engine within Photoshop. Before doing so, make sure to right click on the image and convert it into a smart object, which is like a container that will allow you to create a non-destructive edit. So once the image is into a smart object, you can see this little icon there. You can then go uh, into filter and access the camera row filter. And surprise, surprise, looks what we have here. We have exactly a replica of the workspace that we have inside Lightroom. And because we already know everything about these lighters, because we talked about for about 
two hours nearly, um, you can go ahead and use this lighter to finalize and maybe give it a little bit more contrast or enhance the brightness uh, of the vibrancy. So the intensity of the colors, you know all that. You're a pro by now, <laughs> by the end of this stream. So uh, whenever you're done, just make sure to click on OK. Again, I would strongly recommend to work not destructively. So if you make any change that you're not happy with, you can always go back. And as you can see, just click on the eye icon to see the difference. Few more minutes before we go. All we gotta do is to export our beautiful slides. We know that we have three perfect 180 by 180 uh, images ready for our Instagram grid. If you remember, the original, the original image that Mary was working with um, was this one right here. So we went from this photo, take under very bright light, uncomfortable circumstances, home with your mobile, we edited it, and then we brought it right into Photoshop and we have a scrollable swipe with all these beautiful, colorful um, little um, micro, um, um, micro vegetables. And how do we do that? So all we have to do in order to export it, all we click is on click on file and then export and I'm going to use our dear save for web uh, which is a legacy export preferences for web because we know that we're going to export those images for screen as they're going to go on our Instagram I'm going to make sure that I um, take the zoom a little bit down so I can see all the slices by the way, that happens a lot when we work with slices. If you see th something that looks dull, it's just because it's not selected. So all you have to do here is to click on the format. In this case, it will be JPEG, it's fine. Click on save, select the destination folder of your choice, and then make sure that all slices is selected, just like here, and then click on save. And uh, let's go back into our desktop to find our image here. And as you can see, uh, if I head back into my desktop, we have an images folder, um, which I believe is just right here, with our three different images ready uh, to be posted online. And those will be um, allowed, allow you to give you all these little scroll effect. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So um, I'm going to show you real quick in order to see the uh, more about I know we've got one minute left in order to see more about animation. If you want to learn animation about Photoshop, you can head on imclarity.com. And then uh, from here, let's see if Mari uh, has actually posted the images yet. Um, you can um, go to imclarity.com. And then from here we have the from uh, the, the brand. Uh, the powerful Instagram assets in Photoshop, where I talk more about animation. Time is running too fast, unfortunately. But again, it's such a pleasure to be with you here. Unfortunately, it's nearly time to say goodbye. I want to say thank you uh, to everybody. I, don't, I know that um, Mari received a photo because she was sharing yet. Uh, make sure to check her, um, her Instagram. Make sure to check my Instagram if you want to say hi. I'm always there answering as many questions as possible at I am Clary. And uh, for today, that's it. I hope you had fun. I had a ton of fun. Give me a thumbs up and share some love with a blue heart as usual. If you had fun uh, together, I'm going to upload also these photos into my website so you can hopefully have some edits as well. Thank you, Fabio, Christelle, um, of course, everybody that joined the chat. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye, but uh, you know, don't go anywhere because there is more as usual here at Adobe Live. There is so much more fun coming. I believe there is a lovely Jess, Jess Show Walter uh, with XD and more Lightroom tomorrow. So make sure to stay tuned because there is always so much fun here at Adobe Live. That was so awesome. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Wade, Uma Kern, Valdeir, everybody, Bernadette, Maria Elena, for let us talk about uh, all your business and the real workflow with the Lightroom services and Photoshop. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and I'll catch you soon. Grab a cup of tea and stay tuned for some more Adobe Live next day. Goodbye.